Hi, this is Ethan Hine. Welcome to Play With Your Music. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to make actual music with the piano, and we're going to be taking advantage of the fact that the piano is a color-coded instrument. It has white keys and black keys. And the cool thing is, there is a great deal of music you can get if you just play the white keys of the piano. So in this video, that's what we're going to be talking about. And in the next video, we're going to go deeper into all of the music you can get out of the white keys. In the final video in the series, we're going to flip it around and talk about all of the music you can get by only playing on the black keys. So uh, here we go. Uh, the first thing that you can get out of the white keys of the piano is called the C major scale. And it's considered to be like home base in the Western tuning system, the Western tonal system rather. I don't know why C major is like the most basic scale and A major isn't. It would seem more logical for it to be A major, but there's some weird historical reason why it's C major, so here we are. So here's the C major scale. Starting on the note C, then the next white key, which is D, then the next white key, which is E, then F, G, A, B, C. And going down, it's C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Uh, there's another way of naming the notes in the scale, which will be familiar to you if you've ever seen The Sound of Music. Uh, you know the song, um, Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun, me a name, etc., etc. Um, that is teaching you a system called solfege, uh, which just uses these, uh, these syllables as names for the different degrees of the scale. So. There's do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And solfege is super useful if you're a singer or you're trying to learn how to sight read. Um, there's yet another way of naming the notes in the scale, and for me it's the really useful one, which is just to give them numbers. So the first note, C, is one, obviously. Second one is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And eight and one are the same note. Um, the word octave comes from uh, Latin for eight, and it just means if you go up eight notes in a major scale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you wind up back on the note you started from. So that's what an octave is. Uh, all right, so with that in mind, let's, uh, let's talk about how you can make some actual music using this scale. Um, basically, the key to getting music out of scales is to play them out of order. And the simplest way to do that is to play them using what are called thirds. Uh, the concept is pretty simple. Let's say I start on C. Instead of just going one, two, three, I'm going to skip two and just go from one to three. And this interval between one and three is called a third, no big surprise there. And it should sound pretty nice. Um, if I start on two, if I start on D and skip a note, uh, this interval is also called the third because I'm, I'm going up three notes in the scale. If I start on E, skip a note, I get this third. If I start on F and skip a note, I get this third. And thirds are really easy to play because all you have to do is just play two notes that have an extra note in between them. And already this is sounding a little bit more like music than just going up and down the scale, right? And it sounds even better if I play the notes one at a time like this. One, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, six, one, etc. Right, it's still pretty simple, but it is starting to sound a lot more like music than just going straight up and down the scale. All right, so now let's add a layer of complexity. Instead of just going up one note, uh, sorry, instead of uh, going up one third, we're gonna go up two thirds at a time. So starting on C, I'm gonna skip a note and play E. I'm gonna skip a note and play G. And these three notes together, are called a triad, it's the C major triad. If I start on D and play every other note, I get the D minor triad. 
If I start on E, play every other note, I get the E minor triad. Starting on F, I get the F major triad. Starting on G, I get the G major triad. Starting on A, I get the A minor triad. Starting on B, I get the B diminished triad. And back to C. So check this out. Just by playing the white keys on the piano in this peculiar order, I get seven chords. And those are totally legit chords. You can use those to write songs. Um, and they sound good in any order. You don't just have to play them in scale order. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? All right, now stuff gets really complicated, so bear with me. We're gonna play notes, that, uh, chords rather, that have four notes in them. And these are called seventh chords, um, and there's actually a pretty logical reason for that. I'm gonna start on C, which is one. I'm gonna skip a note up to three, skip a note up to five, skip a note up to seven. So this is called C major seventh because it goes all the way up to the seventh note in the scale. And it's got a richer and more complicated sound than regular old C major. It's got kind of a wistful, jazzy quality. All right, now I'm gonna start on D. I'm gonna play every other note until I have four notes. This is a chord called D minor seventh. Also has kind of a rich, jazzy quality. If I start on E, play every other note. I get E minor 7th, starting on F, F major 7th, starting on G I get G dominant 7th, which is also just known as G7 for short, very important, we'll be talking about it more in the next video. Starting on A, I get A minor 7th, starting on B, I get B half diminished seventh, which is a horrible music theory term that you can forget about immediately because you'll never probably hear it again unless you go to music school. Um, the point is, if you take, if you start on any note and just play every other white key, you get these cool, rich, complicated, jazzy chords. And as with the regular triads, if you play them in any order, they sound just fine. So here, I'm gonna improvise a little uh, jazz progression. Uh, and it sounds even cooler if I play these one note at a time in arpeggios. So this is the beautiful thing about the white keys on the piano. They literally sound good in any order and any combination. Um, if I, in fact, just randomly choose white keys and play them, they're not all going to sound equally good. But they all are at least going to sound acceptable. Um, and there's an incredible amount of music you can discover just by playing around with the white keys in different orders and different combinations. And the next video is going to talk about a slightly more scientific and systematic way of doing just that.